What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will be setting up our database for our Laravel project. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. For some reason I think it's better to start off with databases and Eloquent before we dive into views. That's mostly because I want to show data that we pull from the database inside of you. 99.9% .9 of the people here will be using Laravel to interact with your application's database. Before we can do anything related to databases, we need to make sure that we configure our database correctly. Before we configure it right now, let's have a look inside the configurations for a database access that can be found like any other configuration file inside the convict folder where we have a database.php file. By default, there is one connection for every driver. We've got SQLite, MySQL, PGSQL, SQL Server, but keep in mind that you can change up these values to whatever database you'd like to use. Another quick note is the fact that you can have multiple drivers running on one project. Let's say that you want to use different database connections for two different types of data. One to read post, while the other one, while you want to write data inside another one. If we scroll up to our MySQL driver, right here, you'll see that the URL, host, port, database name, username, and password, and a couple other values, are coming from the .env file. So do not change up the values right here, but instead, let's open the .env file in the root of our directory, and change it up right here. On line number 11, you'll see that we start off with our database connection, which in my case will be MySQL, the host will be our local host, so 127.0.0.1. The database port is 3306. The database name is defined by Laravel itself, which is equal to our project name, but you can change it up right here. So let's say Laravel app or something else. Then the username is root by default, and for myself, it is root as well. Then we got our password, which is also empty for me, but you can add it right here. The only downside of Laravel when it comes to migrations is the fact that it does not have an option to create a database through the CLI. Like I've mentioned in the beginning of this course, I've got an extension installed called Database Client, which can be found in the sidebar of my Visual Studio Code. Right here, I can connect to my databases through an interface. If you got it installed as well, you can open it in the left panel, right click on your local host, and let's add a new database. It's pretty simple to create a database right here because we only need to replace brackets name with our actual database name. In our case, it will be Laravel app. Right above our create database Laravel app, you'll see a play button where you can run the SQL query. Let's click on it. As you can see, it returned a message saying that the execution was successful and our database has been created. And right inside of the left panel, you'll see our Laravel app database. There isn't really an option in Laravel to check whether we have our database connection set up correctly or not. There is a little workaround of it, which is through Artisan Tinker. Tinker is a read evil print loop. Well, that sounds weird. Artisan Tinker is basically a command prompt where you can time your commands, hit run, and then expect what you type to be evaluated and the response printed out. Tinker needs to be accessed through the CLI. So let's navigate back to the terminal. Let me write down clear right here. In here, we can perform PHP Artisan Tinker to get access to Tinker. In order to test our connection out, we should write down DB in capital, colon, colon, connection, which is a method, so we need to add parentheses. Then we need to chain a method called get, capital P, D, O. If we hit enter, you'll see that our MySQL connection has been found and we are connected right now. In order to exit Tinker, we simply need to write down exit semicolon. And as you could see, it prompted us with a exit colon goodbye message. This was it for this short video where I showed you how you could connect to your database and test out if the connection is fine. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.